Get Puck. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Get Puck podcast. Vito, Dave, and Matt here with you. And um, we have some interesting things to talk about today. Uh, to start with, I think we can all agree, after watching uh, last night's game against Calgary, uh, Cole Caulfield had a little moment there. I think collectively everybody was holding their breath. It seems like he's going to be okay. Um, but that would have been terrible, right? Like if, if he would have had any kind of long standing issues, I think that would have really deflated like the fan base, the team. So overall, very happy to hear that he's going to make the trip with the team. We did also find out, unfortunately, the other darling, Sean Monaghan is going to be out two to three weeks. Um, less of a darling, but David Smart also out two to three weeks. So a couple of uh, little updates there just to get everybody caught up to speed in case if you're not as plugged in as we are. Um, but I did want to kind of bring up another name. He is currently not a Montreal Canadian. But of course, as the rumor mill always churns, uh, his name has come out again. Uh, and I mentioned Jesse Puljarvi, guys. First off, tell me straight up. Do you even want, if you had the ability, would you even be going after Jesse Puljarvi? Not a player like him, him specifically. Dave, is he a guy that you would target? No, I wouldn't. I, th I thought you'd say no. Go ahead. Why? <laughs> why would? You, why no? Why no? Look, the guy. He's 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 you know highly valued. He's he's one of those guys that obviously Edmonton's going to want to kind of has to move in order to make things work. But I just he's too inconsistent again. Like what has he done with his with his career so far? I mean, I think a career best of fourteen goals maybe. Um, this season he has what six points in thirty games. Like. How's that interesting to me? And I, and this is the type of guy who's always linked, always, always linked to Montreal. He's always linked to trade rooms. Yep. It, it's it's because he's the only guy who's kind of a, a first round pick that has a bit of value that could be moved out of Edmonton, I guess. And it's just to me, it, it doesn't interest me whatsoever. I think that he's a guy who will come here, and fans will get excited, and he'll middle out with, with like you know forty points maybe, and and people will just get just as frustrated as they got with Jonathan Drouin. I think it's a disaster waiting to happen. I don't think a change of scenery will really help him. I think uh, this is what he is at this point of his career, and uh, I'm not interested. So pass. you're 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 pass. Big pass from Dave. You're putting him <laughs> in the Jonathan Drouin camp and not the potential Kirby Doc camp. That's where yes. you see this. Okay, yeah. you know, it, it would, would you take him. It would, it would depend. On how how what always, how does that to give? Always the middle ground. Huh? Never, it has, never, it yes, never I mean, a no. I mean, it look, depends. It, 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 look, at the end of the end, Dave, it was, it was he's got a career high fifteen goals, so you were off by one. Oh, okay. 15. It's That's okay, pretty good though. That's it's pretty okay. good. It's okay. It was in fifty five games. There's a difference. The pace is different, but um, it, it would depend on honestly on, on what the Montreal Canadiens would have to give. I, I, the way it looks like Edmonton would be. Definitely, if they're going to look to move him, it would be at a loss. They're not going to get an equivalent third overall pick in comparison to what he was drafted at. It's it's done. They would have to get like a second round pick probably for him, uh, maybe even a problem player, maybe just something that addresses a need. But at the end of the day, what I don't like about Jesse Pugliarvi is they've nailed it. it he's very inconsistent. Um, putting it in the Drew Wayne camp, I don't think Kent Hughes would ever trade a Sergachev caliber player to acquire Puyarvi, that's for sure. Um, but at the same time, they're, 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 there's what's their gain really for Puyarvi? Because if you bring him in and he has the same attitude or the same uh, gameplay and he's not able to perform the way that people expect him to, he's just in a market that's just going to crush him even more than in Edmonton. On top of well, that, he I played think it's his McDavid. last hurrah, though. It would be his last hurrah. Like you, you would only know that after you pull the trigger. If they do it, it's because they think that that coming into this area with this coach, uh, with this culture, is what would put him to the ceiling that that supposedly he has. Right? Like you'd only know it after you pull the trigger. There, there are people out there that really believe that if he'd come to this market and be under Martin Saint Louis tutelage and all that, that it would work out. You know, and yeah, maybe sure. maybe they're right. Maybe those people are right. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's it's another project for them to work on. And yes, they do have the luxury of time in a sense and to work on some of that. And, and the fans, fans would be a little patient with them, um, considering that we're still, quote unquote, in a rebuild. But at the same time, how, how, how 
how much is this guy's confidence crushed by what's been happening in Edmonton and how long is it going to take just to build his confidence back up to a level where he feels good enough to play in Montreal, yeah, in the Montreal but, market? But again, I, I mean, I think Dave, when Dave compared him to like potentially coming in as a Drouin, I think that's the perfect sort of scenario because you, you, you either become a Drouin with all due respect to him, or you become a Kirby doc. Like Kirby, Kirby Doc, I think this is the best but, but Kirby case Doc, scenario. But that you... the, the difference is that Kirby Doc was playing well until he got hurt. So he showed that what he's capable of doing. Puliarvi was playing with Connor McDavid at times, and, and he still couldn't put his, bring his so, game together. So, and that's an interesting thing, right? Because a lot of people mention this, and they're like, he, he, you know, he's he's still not good, and he played with the best player in the world. And and while on one hand, I completely understand that, and sometimes the best player in the game, world the could elevate his, his, his team, his line mates, and make them better than they seem. But sometimes when the best player in the world is that much better than everybody else on his line, you actually fall worse. You're worse off for it. You can't keep up to his level of pace. You can't keep up to his hockey IQ and you look that much worse. And I don't know, it's like a it's like a weird rever like reversal of how it should be for certain players, certain players. We know that with Gretzky, he basically made all his line mates look like phenoms even though put him with anybody else and eh, not so much but when, so. but when you watch pull and you watch him play it's almost as though he doesn't even know what his style is anymore he doesn't even know the kind of player he well, is well he's shattered you're right with saying his confidence is shattered but that that actually continues to my point where and, and i'm not saying i'm super forward or against it necessarily i would actually like to see it happen just to kind of see if if the magic can can get recaptured a la Kirby Doc, you bring another guy with high ceiling that's not meeting the potential, comes into this market with this coach, with this uh, culture, and then all of a sudden they flourish. I, I got to correct you. got him really I, well. I, I need to correct you on this one. Kirby Doc did, wasn't not showing his potential. Kirby Doc was just in a, in a, on a team that was going through a bunch of issues and he got hurt. There's a difference there because Kirby Doc had moments where you saw him playing and he was doing very well. Yes, but he was trending downwards, right? His face-offs yes. were awful. It was terrible. Yes. He didn't look like he was working hard. There, there was character issues. There was all sorts of other issues, Vito. It wasn't just, uh, oh, he got hurt and that's it. Then we're going to give him a pass. Like there was, there was, there was all sorts of issues in Chicago yeah. that his teammates maybe didn't see, but that management and and, and the coaching staff got frustrated with there, uh, and the media covering them. And the the one thing uh, that I, you, you know, Vito, you said like, oh, if, it, it depends on what uh, you get back. So like correct in that sense so if you if you give up a second round pick for uh for him it's fine because kirby doc you you gave up a lot to get kirby doc and you gave up a lot to get jonathan Drouin, right so what the original question was kind of phrased in the way if you're going to give up you get a steal like kirby doc but i mean they gave up either romanov or nazar or whoever you want to count as you, what you gave up for kirby doc so they weren't it, it was a steal in the sense that he's playing well, but they still gave up a lot to get. No, to abs top. absolutely. And, and that's the what ass I don't won't be that high. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's for what sure I don't not. want to give up, to, to be clear. For, yeah. You know, that, that, that that's what I want to just clear up on my end. But, uh, okay, I, so, like, I, for example, so, some people had suggested, uh, you know, Edmonton's interested in Josh Anderson. Could a package uh, be made that where Pugliarvi's involved and Josh Anderson will go the other way? And I wouldn't do that trade because I no, think Montreal could get something better from other from another team or something that meets the Montreal Canadiens needs a little more than if you do some kind of package that would re, that would be uh, I don't know Edmonton's first and Pliarvi. You know some of them some people might say oh, that's a that's a solid package for Josh Anderson because those are people who are not big believers of what Josh Anderson brings to the table. I think that given what Josh uh, Josh Anderson's market is that you can get more than that package that I just suggested. Wow, I I, I kind of disagree with that. As, <laughs> I I don't know mm. if you get a first and more than that for for uh, josh anderson i think that's what you're going to get and if you get that that's a good move i i, I don't think well let's face it first edmonton's, first, edmonton's first when the yeah. season's all said and done it's either going to be a very late first almost feeling like a second round pick in a very deep draft is still very good there's value to it for sure but I, I would i would think that if the if kent hughes were to trade josh anderson i'm not so sure he'd want the pick i think he would just want a first uh, equivalent a caliber player that you can see the potential and it's it's tough for the other team to get to move that player and it would he would be looking for something that the development has already started with a certain player rather than going for a pick and take a gamble on and that's where I th i'm saying i expect that he would want more he wouldn't want Pugliarvi is 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 behind in his development so to speak there's it's like you have to build the player for as though from scratch again unfortunately 
Well, they that's were where talking, I don't think they want to go that route. Yeah, they were talking, not that this would happen, because apparently by all accounts from, from the Edmonton fans that I was seeing countering this, there's no way that they would part with him. But uh, their second best prospect in so their, in their <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that was the name that just kept getting thrown out there. Like that, throw him with. Uh, but th that's a that's a guy Darby. who that's a guy who makes him disp uh, the dispensable, right? Because that's who's who's next in line to take that winger spot. Like I don't I don't think he's he's gonna get moved at all. I think Edmonton would be dumb to move that like that. No, I I don't disagree, but but it is curious. Okay, I I mean. Is there here? How about this then? So moving past Jesse Pujarvi for a second, do you do you have anybody at the top of your head who you think Kent Hughes would go and look at as a trying as as trying to pull another Kirby Doc? I keep using pulling a Kirby Doc because that just seems to be the, the 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 term to use right this moment. But the buy low on somebody whose ceiling is very high and they're not meeting it on their curtain team. Do you foresee any team out there that is obviously going to be looking to make a playoff push? Because that's the team that you'd have to pick from that has a player like this that you can see potentially fitting on this team, both culture, both position, positionally, uh, and 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 that and that can work. Is there anybody that comes to mind that you can see them doing that with? Not to put you too much on the spot here. I didn't really pre prep you boys before in the podcast, but. Is there somebody, do you have any names? Do you hear rumblings about names? Is there somebody that you yourselves are kind of high on, but isn't really meeting expectations that you're like, oh, that'd be cool if they went for this? And, and, and barring the cost, okay? Like, let's not talk about what it would cost to acquire them. Just somebody that you happen to like. Hmm. Man, that's hmm. a good question. I, I honestly have nobody at the top of my mind that I could think of that, you know, I think that would be attainable. But obviously there, there are, right? Like Kirby Doc was a guy we never even heard of Kirby oh, Doc. Oh, yeah, yeah, for uh, sure, before, for sure. Before you know, uh, Ken Hughes went to go get him. Uh, same thing, Justin Barron. Like, there's, there, I think these guys are just going to go out and grab players who are, uh, you know, available. I mean, it's tough to say who's available right now. And, and the most guys who you hear are available, it comes with a big what if, oh, but. It comes with a big but. It comes with a big, like, issue. And I don't know if that's the style of Ken Hughes. I mean, Kirby Doc maybe, you know, was someone that they had their eye on. And, and you look at that and a guy who has his issues, but they think that they can reform. But I don't know if there's someone obvious out there that, that I mean, I, I couldn't give you a name right now. I, I'd have to think about it, to be honest. The only name that I could think of that I heard at the, ver at the very, it was mostly during the off season. His name came up a couple of times. And, and obviously with the Gordon link, people suggested that it could Krapsov. happen. No. Well, yeah, there was Krapsov, but it was uh, Capo Caco. His name oh, was, boy. his name was circulating, but do I... First off, Ooh, boy. I, I'm not saying that Montreal would go after, but it is a name that got brought up. And it's a name, it's yep. one of those names that yep. you're not hearing it in the rumor mill, maybe because he's not available, or maybe it's one of those that like would just sneak by everybody, right? If something were to happen and they would trade him to get something to to help for a playoff push or to Ooh. help them in the playoffs. But do I see the New York Rangers doing it? It's possible, but they would definitely it wouldn't be cheap. It would, I just, it would not it be cheap. It would not be cheap. cheap. And, and no. I just don't think that I would, from the Montreal Canadiens perspective, pay the price tag to acquire Capo Caco. Yeah, I mean, there's a first. An there's first That's going back the name. other way there, and I don't know if they're in the <laughs> if they're in the business of dealing out first at this particular point in time. But that's an interesting name. I got to admit, that's an interesting name. I think any connection back to 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 Gorton with his time in New York is always a little extra interesting, right? Because these were his guys. He picked them. So it always kind of like, well, obviously he likes them. He likes what they have to offer. And maybe he thinks, hey, bring them here. And I, I got what's happening here now. It, it would be interesting. I mean, uh, I'd even throw out Lafreniere technically. You could kind of also <laughs> talk about, but uh, probably even less so. Remember, oh. remember all that talk about trading the first overall pick for Lafreniere? So would you I, trade I Slavkovsky now? Would you trade Slavkovsky? Oh, for that's Lafreniere? a good question. Would you trade Slav for Lafreniere? No. no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. La okay. I wouldn't. Some I people would call us crazy because they they see what Lafreniere's upside is, and he's got the upside. But at the same time, if you look at Slavkovsky's the toolkit that he comes with, and if you if the Canadians actually hone in on that and bring him to where his full potential is, he's going to be one of those rare players in the NHL that have that certain toolkit that's a la Rantanen in a sense. I'm not saying he's going to be Rantanen. Wow. 
but he's got that big frame. He could protect the puck. He could do certain things. Then you see flashes of it. If they could just hone in on that and give him his role and develop them the way that we hope that he can be developed to, he, like, I mean, it's gonna, you're going to look and say Lafreniere. There, there are other types of Lafreniere's out there, but there won't be many Slavkovskis out there. Wow, that's, that's a that's a big take. I don't know if you realize how big of a take that was. Well, that's true, and I'm gonna get I'm probably, very, I'm probably big gonna get some flack for this from certain fans because there's certain people out there that would would that would trade Slavkovsky right away to get Alexis Lafreniere. I'm not in that camp. And to and be fair, I don't think what, those people opinion. are crazy. I don't think they're crazy. I mean, who knows, right? They're still very, very green, the both of them. Exactly. I just think that your take about how there are a lot of Lafreniere-type players yeah, out there was pretty big versus okay, there's not so okay. many Slavkovsky. It's, com it's coming off wrong. It's not that there's a lot of, like, oh, my God, a crazy <laughs> amount of Lafreniere's. Revisionist. No, That's not what you said. It's not, not that there's a crazy amount, but, like, when you look at Lafreniere's game, okay, yeah, you say, okay, there are wingers of that caliber or wingers of that mold. That, that play in the NHL today. How many big body, power forward esque guys with the skill and hands that Slavkowski potentially has? And he's 18 years old and he's already playing the way that he's playing. And he's not physically mature yet, but he's 220 something pounds. And you're seeing him now as games progressing and getting better and better and better per game. No, no, it's always sure. these little moments. So that's what I'm saying. It's if you look at the look at the overall that Slavkovsky brings, and if you think of the potential that comes with that, you prefer like, that you kind have, of you have a you have a rare piece that could be in the yeah. Montreal's uh, okay. I system. Mean, and, and, and what that's you're what saying I mean. is fair. Yeah, you think his style of player is rarer to find than than an Alexi Lafreniere's player. Alexi Lafreniere might be one of the better of his caliber type players, but you're suggesting that it's just harder to find a a big frame guy that has the toolkit that he has. I don't think people would think you're crazy. I mean, the first way how you said it was a little bit interesting, but overall, I mean, yeah, I think I think people are in either camp. I don't think either people are great. Dave, would you do that trade? Just curious. I mean, I'd look into it, but it's it's hard to say, right? Because Lafreniere, again, you, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. It's only his third season, right? We, we forget. We feel like he's been around for a lot longer. Um, I'd probably – it'd be too early to make that trade for me. I, it, you're basically – it's 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 a toss-up, and you might, might as well just stick with what you have and who you drafted first overall. I, I, don't, I wouldn't do it. And, and you have to, you're going to have to consider and factor in how would our God de Chenu, Lafreniere, tolerate yeah, the pressure that, that comes to Montreal? I mean, that is, that is a point. It's a point. And, and my, my little extra tongue-in-cheek point here would be not that you base a hockey decision on this whatsoever. And I don't know Lafreniere enough and haven't seen him interviewed enough to, to really make an assessment about him. But, but Slavkowski is – he's just a – like 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 he projects this real kind of like friendly sort of like young eager happy to just be here type have, guy have and you that's, ever read, have you that's ever a read really a good Slavkov quality to have okay he, his character and his his the way he carries himself have you ever read a quote on twitter or something that says hey yeah. Sapkowski said this and in your mind you could already hear how he said I could hear how voice. he said yeah yeah exactly you know what I mean, mean? like it's just I like I like him and I like what he brings in that kind of environment like when we talk culture the intangibles outside of hockey I like that not to say Lafreniere doesn't have it I don't know if about him he just seemed a little bit more stoic when he was drafted he's a little bit more maybe like like somber and in his own character Slavkowski's like a big joker it seems like he's just a happy kid and he's got a lot of skill and I like that I like that, that about the player that should mean absolutely nothing, and I it mean means nothing. The, the, it means nothing. Okay? I just personally like it. You're you're in danger of falling with like the Leafs. The Leafs are in love with Mitch Marner, and oh, he's the kid, and and Patrick Marlowe was his dad, and they've spent all. They're in love Christmas with him together. today. No, no, no because but, he's but, on that streak. No, Where was the I mean, love last year when they all I, wanted him off the team? I mean, for the for the past five years, everyone on social media, oh, he's taking pictures with uh, you know Matthews is over yeah. for Christmas dinner. It's all cute and fun, but if you can't get past the first round, nobody cares, and that's why you should never base a hockey decision on cultures in the room, like unless your culture is extremely toxic. It means nothing, I don't think. No, no, no for sure. I'm just saying he's he's an aff affable uh, character. Affable? Like he's just yeah. affable. For yeah, sure. yeah. He's uh, he's for just sure, a good I kid. I, I I like that. Yeah, but I, 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 no, go I ahead. Like, Last slide, buddy. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Sovkovsky as he's growing. Same here. Same here. You know, I'm not. Like, I'm not I mean, looking at him for anybody. Else. Where it was a, basically Calgary was on a two on zero, oh, and Kova said it was trying hard to skate. And I mean, I don't know if anybody saw that play. But Slavkovsky literally used the stick to give yeah, push them. that extra little boost to kind of stop. Like, 
you're thinking about these types of things at the age of 18 years old in the NHL goes to show it's not just your body and frame. You've got a certain IQ and a certain little thing that just happened to have worked and you thought about it in that split second. That's fair. That's fair. I do, I do, I do want to pivot just because this other sort of topic has been really hot today and I thought it would be a fun thing to talk about. The NBA has gone ahead and announced that they're going to rename their awards. Now, we're not really going to talk about the NBA, but what is fascinating is apparently it got a lot of people talking about the NHL and is it time to retire gracefully the names of some of the awards yes. uh, and rename them with more contemporary names that speak to the people that are watching hockey today. Um, it is interesting. I think we have a graphic. There, it's from, um, I think it's Jay Fresh Hockey who put this up. Yes, it was. And good, they good asked job, a way. question. What was that? Good job to Jay Fresh on this one, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is really cool too. And and they did a big poll and they got a thousand fans to vote. The first interesting thing to, to note is 68% of those polled said that they wanted the names of the trophies to be changed. And I think that is a pretty good reflection of probably what the current overall fans would be like. I would, I would say it's anywhere between 65 and 75-ish percent would be in favor of it. What is more interesting is, is to take a little bit of a dive now into the different names that were suggested. This isn't a comprehensive list. There was only four options per. There might be other ones out there, but just to look at the ones that are here right now and to just get your guys' take on it. When we look at the Art Ross, now, again, go ask the majority of people today. Let's talk about people. Let's let's be fair. Let's say 30 and under. Go ask them who Art Ross was. How many of them are going to know who he was? Okay, think? so in addition, I'm, I'm going to say for those that don't know or are mixed up with the trophies, the Art Ross is for the top the top point score. Okay, so yes. to okay, me... So I was going to... Yeah, I was going to say... That's there, yeah. that went, and it should be called the Wayne Gretzky Trophy, I 100% agree with that because... He's the only guy in a single season to get 212 points in a season, and do that he got 200 plus points a couple of times. Well, so, let's also be let's also be fair about Wayne Gretzky. No one's ever going to reach his point total, so he'll no, have that forever. He, he won't. So that that should be should they rename every trophy? Probably not. But that okay, trophy so, so hold on, let's be hold on, slow pump your tires. I, okay, so so we put the graphic down, but just to say, just to, to for all of those listening, so the Art Ross, right, like Vito was suggesting, is for most points in a season. At 56%, people said it should be named the Wayne Gretzky Trophy. Vito says yes. I also agree. Dave, what do you think? No. Oh, geez, Dave, of course not. Why not, Dave? I don't think they should be named for anything, man. Like, so what happens in in fifty years when nobody remembers who Wayne Gretzky is, or or, or nobody as remembers? As long as Gretzky has those records, they're not going to forget who Wayne Gretzky is. They're going to no, have, but but it's a it's a hold on a second. It's a fair point, but my counter to that would be: once you make a precedent, all you need to do is every fifty years rename it. You retire what's it. You put it. In, you put. Well, what do you mean? What's the point of it? It's what's still the, the point same of naming trophy. Okay, but what's the point? Why not just why know Wayne Gretzky? In, 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 in 50 years from now, it's like, who the heck's going to know Art Ross even more than now? But that's the point. It, it, it talks about the history. You, you just, it should just be the MVP. It should just be naming things after people. And, and this is going to go on another tangent, but it's, it's stupid because people forget the person and they start associating it with an object. I think it's absolutely stupid. It, it, St. Catherine Street. Who remembers it? Who, who's talking about the St. When I say St. Catherine, are you thinking about the saint or are you talking about St. Catherine Street? Or René Lévesque. Who, what's the first thing that comes to mind? It's not René Lévesque. The, the, it's going to be René Lévesque, the freaking street. It's the same thing goes on. A hundred years from now, it, it just, to me, nothing should be named. There's nothing stupider than naming something after. So what? And, so if you didn't have a name to give the trophy, out of curiosity, what for most points in a season, what do you call that trophy? Most points in a season. That is that's so. It. That's so bad, Dave. You can't. Why do is that. it bad? That's so, because it's got to It needs to have call it something some like, sort like of in baseball. The Gold Glove, the the Slugger Award. It's not attached to a person's name. What happens if Wayne? You you rename it Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky ends up with extremely ends up being a. a, a what happens? Oh my God, it. Dave. <laughs> You're going to change it every three years. And then what happens when that guy, oh, he gets canceled. In six years, oh, he said, look what he said on a podcast. Okay, we got to get, we got to change Bobby Orr out of this now. We got to change, we got to change the Dominic Hasek award. That's a fair uh, point, he, though. He, I, you gotta I mean, I mean okay, okay. But oh. hold on a second. I mean, cancel culture is running rampant right now. I don't disagree. And yes, like perfect example, perfect example. You mentioned Bobby Orr. So Bobby Orr is 
in the conversation. I mean, I think most put him at the top, but he's in the conversation of the greatest defenseman ever to play the game, right? Ever. Now, oh, yeah, you could make the argument this. that there should be two different defensive yes, trophies for offensive defensemen and defensive defensemen. We'll talk about that in a second. Right now, there isn't. So the Norris Trophy, let's say they renamed it to the Bobby Orr Trophy. Okay, so it's the Bobby Orr Trophy now. Everybody seems to be okay-ish about that. And to your point, he went on uh, he went on a podcast and he said some stuff. I think he's a Trump supporter or whatever, so he's being canceled. Does that but diminish Trump, what he did in hockey? But being a Trump supporter is very, very different, okay? The, being a Trump supporter, uh, uh, as much as people can despise them or, or for whatever reason, and, and, and I am definitely the furthest thing from a Trump supporter, but it's a difference of opinion. That's all it is. It's not, you're not a racist. Yeah, there's, there's going more to the other extreme. Like if, if the guy all of a sudden goes on. I, I'm, I'm talking on. about like, like you, it, it's, it's stupid to me. Baseball has it perfectly. But Gold, those things, Gold. yeah, but you're saying baseball, but when you talk golden glove, I mean, it's because it, uh, I don't even explain this, like slugger, it has meaning. The golden glove, it has meaning. Like you're able to put these names to things. But you're it not has meaning because they Best infielder, that. best, best infielder. It's not best infielder. Like, so like that's a stupid like name. F figure it, figure something out. But naming after people. I, it's a slippery slope and it's just to me it makes no sense and if you're going to change it every 50 years it, it erases the history of the award how many people well, have won the the bobby Orr award oh well it's also been called the james norris award. you got to think ahead in 100 years now you have three different names in 150 years now you have four different names yeah, for this award it's ridiculous like, that's Will that's a significant that amount of time we don't care but it doesn't matter you have to think ahead of these things to me it doesn't it doesn't make I any mean, sense i i can understand i mean if they leave them as is everybody knows them even though technically you are arguing to leave the names of individuals on these things because they are named after people it's already. already done of course and that, but it's so, already so done. It's the done damage is done but like well, but you some, know, of them, I, some of them could be renamed in, in the way dave is describing i just i don't know man i think i think uh uh who was it ray ferraro tweeted something about like it was on his podcast also and they were talking about this and once upon a time and he said how cool would it be you you get the Wayne Gretzky trophy from Wayne Gretzky for for foreseeable Knockwood another twenty five years right he can still be actually the guy giving it to you you know that that's pretty cool and there's some there's some there's some connections to the people of yesteryear of of like perhaps our our father's generation maybe not our grandfathers with whose names you know some of these guys with uh, the the Con Smythe and things like this like we don't have any connection to those players to your point it's more an object. I don't think of the guy, I think of the object. But if you have Wayne Gretzky's trophy for most points in a season, I will start thinking about both. Obviously, the person I grew up with, I remember seeing play. That's That speaks to me. Okay, but look, look. Wayne Gretzky is one thing. Because Wayne Gretzky is Wayne Gretzky is Wayne Gretzky. Like, he, tr I, I get he transcends it. the game. Okay. That's fair. Go, like, Fine. like okay. So, so, let's go, so let's go name the award Dominic Hasek trophy. Like, what the heck is that? that that's the, the worst the name I've ever but Come but it's on. interesting. It is it's interesting because if you look, it's interesting for me and you who, who find it funny. And then and then, but it, like ten years down the line, when no one remembers who Dominic Hasek is, everyone's gonna be like, why the hell is it named after Dominic Hasek? He was fun for people in the '90s and early 2000s because he was the dominator. And he, but he's not I the mean, best goaltender to. Like, come on. He's one it's, of them. I mean, maybe not the best, but you got to hold his <sighs> name up there with some pretty high esteem when you talk about Hasek. D d definitely high esteem. But no, but he's like I would over it, Martin it, Brodeur, over it's, Patrick Wall. Okay, that, that I agree with. Maybe maybe you put Marty Brodeur there. Like I don't know who you put, but I'm not opposed to. Like it is okay. So my point was okay. just so I go back to it just quickly. It is interesting that people that were pulled on this are are want to keep certain trophies names. So the Vesna they wanted to actually keep it the Vesna. The Rocket they want to keep it the Rocket. The Heart. They want to keep it the heart. I mean, these are interesting things. Now, the Jack Adams, they want it to be the okay. Scotty Bowman. I can get behind that. I can I, get okay, behind listen, that. Like, for, the, for example, for the legacy for the art of, of Jack Adams, just, just out of curiosity, like imagine being replaced. When when do you replace Scotty Bowman? But but Jack Adams Imagine had his name on the award for decades. I mean, what at what point are you are you offending him? It's 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 been the, the name of the award forever. Like we're just now talking about it. it wasn't like oh we gave him this thing and then like three years later ah we replaced you too bad Jack Adams he's had it for I don't even know how many decades okay. it's not really offending okay. anymore okay I think some I of those know. trophies that. some of those trophies <laughs> should be renamed based on the status of the player so the Wayne Gretzky Trophy for example at the end of the day he is the best point producer of all time 
Who's the best goal scorer of all time? <laughs> it's still being worked out, but right now someone argues it's Ovechkin. I still say it's it's what? it's Wayne Gretzky because the guy okay, got why, 194 why goals as a playmaker. Anymore? Why aren't uh, their names on there? Why isn't Wayne Gretzky also the uh, the Rocket Richard? Because you're not going to name every trophy the Wayne Gretzky trophy. No, well, Wayne, oh, again, so. Wayne Gretzky transcends it, but I do think you should put some some sort of rule, let's say, where, like, okay, so, so uh, I don't even want to say it because it's going to, like, uh, to say it, but, like, let's say we were talking about renaming the Rocket. Let's say, right, most goals in a season. Right now, that's the Rocket and it's, it's got tons of legacy, and it even resonates more with us being Montreal Canadiens fans and everything with our history. Fine. But I would argue you go it only look... resonates with, with Montreal fans. Like, for, for young Mon hockey fans, it only resonates for those from Montreal. Fair. I don't think people in uh, Colorado much care. Uh, about... they, they, okay, uh, so, the so, so even more. hockey fans probably think Rocket means just like the guy ripped a bunch of slap shots. They don't even think hey, it's possible. Sure. Okay, so it's possible, right? So, so and, and in addition to that, it's called the Rocket Rich. It, it's not even called the Morris Richard, it, or maybe it's called the Morris Rocket Richard, and they abbreviate it. But anyways, it's it's known as the Rocket, right? It's the Rocket it's Richard the Morris trophy. Richard trophy uh, we had thirty nine percent on Jay Fresh Hockey's poll that wanted to be named the the Alexander Ovechkin. He's still playing. He's still playing. Like I don't agree with that. I think there needs to be at least a period where uh, I don't know what it'd be, but off the top of my head, let's say ten years. The guy needs to be retired ten years before you can actually put his name on the trophy, right? And, and to be fair to Alex Ovechkin, yeah, if you're going to rename a goal-scoring trophy after he retires and, and you give it 10 years, that's the name you put. And there's been some great goal scorers. But you got to you got to give it to him. Score, there's been better goal scorers than Morris Richard. But Morris so, Richard so you think, changed you, the game you think, to a certain extent and, and, think, and made a stance and went, as we know, all scorer of Morris Richard. So that, that's probably why, in addition to him being a goal scorer, why they actually gave him a, gave a trophy and named it after him. So, so yeah. you think so? So this is a perfect example. You think Alex Ovechkin retires this season, 2032? Everyone in Montreal is going to be perfectly fine with removing Maurice Richard. I know. From I do not think that. I do Alex not think Ovechkin. that. But I also, I also am not. Um, uh, I'm not. Uh, what would be the word here? I don't know. Let's just say foolish enough to think that the entire NHL revolves around the Montreal Canadiens. Would I not be happy about it? I would probably be like, I prefer to have the Rockets name on this trophy forever, but I would at least understand that the Rocket, like you say, only resonates to people who are under the age of 70 that live here because it's our history. It's a Montreal Canadiens history. But if they did say, we're going to put it in, tw in 10 years now, so we're, we're 2032 or 2033, and they rename it to the Alexander Ovechkin, who might actually break Gretzky's record for most goals, by the way, it's possible. And he is officially the greatest goal scorer in NHL history. Yeah, you got to sit back and say, I guess it kind of makes sense that the the trophy for most goals. I only goals want three changes. I only want three changes. Honestly, leave everything as is. But <laughs> you can't just pick and choose. It's either you can't pick and no, choose. No, but no, what no. are your three? Are, what are your three? The Art Ross should be named the Wayne Gretzky Award. Fine. And they should split the James Norris in a sense. Have one for top offensive defenseman and uh, top defensive defenseman. I can respect That's that. Only, I, I, can that. I can get behind is. that. I can get behind that. And the reason, and, and there's about a good five to ten reasons that you could probably come up with why they should have find, finally have an offensive defenseman trophy. Oh yeah, there's, I don't think anyone will ever debate you on what the yeah. Need I think I think it's silly they haven't trophy. done that. I think it's, it's kind silly, of, but I, I think else, they could leave. But I think they don't do it notice. because of the history. I think that's exactly the problem. But the I think there's a problem many, right now with the defensive yeah, trophy. There is but a how many there. offensive defensemen in the past got got busted or rather the reverse it's how many defensive defensemen who didn't put up the the numbers got mm -hmm. left to the wayside and didn't win the norris because it's more interesting to give it to a guy who got 65 70 points as a defenseman right and also the the, the problem right now with the norris is it's it's really not to me it's, it's kind of like a retirement tour it's like okay so drew doughty hasn't won one in, yet but he definitely deserves a norris in his career so let's give it to him he's had a good year yeah. let's give it to him and that's the problem yeah, and yeah, if you split Robert. those awards yeah, Shea, Shea Weber. Shea Weber unfortunately retired before he got to his turn, but it is very <laughs> much the Oscar. It's the Leo DiCaprio Oscar of, of the awards. It was it's just for sure. he I'm, he put in so many good ones, but they gave him for the Revenant. I mean, that's yeah, what this is. Very yes. good, very good analogy. And I think that if you split them, I think you're going to have more of a fair balance. Well, I think that's think another. You, you split, let's, say you, let's say you split. You, you were to split it last year, right? Kale McCarr was the offensive defenseman. Hands down, but Victor yep. Hedman had a fantastic season. 
fantastic two way game. Yeah. Or even Roman Yossi had a fantastic. Well, Roman Yossi was right well, up Roman Yossi, there. Uh, he was right he was up there with Kevin Hart. Yeah, he, say, he but, almost but, he but, almost but, won but, the damn but, thing. Yeah. But just to say, you know what I mean? Like you're leaving out somebody, a defenseman who literally had a great season, put up the numbers. He just didn't. He was 15 points shy from the leader, but he had a, probably a better defensive season than the one the guy won. I mean, I, I just, I sit back and I think about this and I look at it and I'm like, I do like history and I do like certain things have this continuity to it. So when you talk about the Art Ross, everybody knows that what you're talking about. If you talk about the Vesna, everybody knows you're talking about the best goal in the league. Like, there, it's just synonymous. But you're, you're going to have some people it. that are going to hear your words and they're going to go, they're gonna go look it up. Which one's the Art Ross again? Well, you so, told me it's the Wayne Gretzky no. award? I, okay, it's got to be for points or something like that. Well, right? yes, kind of but... But still, right? You could argue that Gretzky's name should be on the rocket. I mean, you could make the argument he's got the most goals in history. Mm -hmm. So, so you'd have to look it up. But I think to Dave's point, you have to put certain precedents. I don't know if it's a hundred year term, but maybe fifty years. Every fifty years, you can go and refresh the name, and and maybe you get the fans to pull on it or something, make it a little bit interactive so it makes sense. I don't know, but I'm not necessarily opposed to changing it. I would say I'm in the 68% who would be okay if they decided to do it. I'm not going to lose sleep if they don't do it. But, I mean, I would be kind of miffed if they did rename some of these things. Like, I see they want to rename the Selkie to the Patrice Bergeron. We all know his name should be on that trophy. I'm not saying no. But he's still actively playing, guys. 68% you want to rename it to the guy who's still playing? He's going to probably even play maybe next year. It's going to like, end up be, It's going to end up being like the arenas, you know? The arena used to mean something, right? It used to be the forum. It That's used to be point. Boston Gardens. It used yeah. to be, you know, even the ACC for a long time, you know, and now it's just what whoever pays the most has the best, you know, marketing campaign. They're going I to mean, get it's going to be the same the, thing. Yeah, to an extent, I can understand that. But I do think that the naming rights for these places is, and because it's bought, people care less. I do think that the names that we're throwing out have reverence and do speak to people. If you put, you know, uh, Bobby Orr's name on a trophy, I mean, most hockey fans know who that is. They might not know exactly what he did, but they know that this is a really top name. Gordy Howe's name. People know who Mr. Hockey is. I mean, for the most part, they do. Maybe not a 12-year-old, but it's part of hockey education. I mean, these are these are big names that shouldn't be left to the wayside either, right? Like, I'm sure Jack Adams was a great coach. I'm sure, uh, you know, Art Ross, he was a huge hockey builder. I think he only played three NHL games, by the way. I found that out today. I thought that was interesting. But, like, you know, they they had their time. The, the, the trophy was named after them for a very long time. I think it'd be cool to put a little bit of a spin on it for for the next generations to come. Let's say it's a 50-year term. Uh, I, I think it'd be a good idea. Now, who gets the name would be another major controversy because we're looking at something here. I mean, you know, the Calder. I think that's a fantastic one to talk about too. They want to rename it the Timu Solani Award, which I think he had the best rookie year of all time, right? Yeah, so that's course. where the connection right. is. But like, why specific? Is it specifically because of that? Well, the guy, the guy scored. Didn't he score seventy six goals? <laughs> seventy something goals in his rookie season. Yeah, I mean, so it makes sense. It makes okay. sense. But I mean, and, you know, I, I, yeah. I, the thing is, like the Conn Smythe. I look at the Conn Smythe. Like, who are you gonna? What are you gonna name? Like, it's just there's just to me. It's you're you're welcoming. I, I'm all for being pro progressive. You know me. I'm I'm all about progressive. Mr. Stuff. Progressive. Okay. Yeah. And I and I like and it fits. Cool. It fits basketball's culture to do it. It fits it. I don't know why. I can't explain why, but it just it fits the culture well, to have something hip a and lot trendy. more hip and modern than the yes. NHL. NHL the is NHL, the no league, you know? It's them trying to grasp at straws. I feel like it would it would be misplaced. And I just I I, <laughs> I I don't like it. There's way more things to improve on in the NHL than the name of the awards. And I just think it's a it's a bad idea. I think it's a bad idea. And I'm not for it. And uh, I mean I won't cry if it happens. Yeah, I, I mean I, that's what you're saying. That was so like cool. the lady right. bing. <laughs> the Lady Bing, like, okay. When you say that there's things to improve, the Knuckles really, Award. <laughs> I really hope they improve those digital ads because, uh, good God, they're terrible. But according to Bettman, eh, according hey. to Gary Bettman, who polled people allegedly, they're fine with it. Guys, it's a we're all fine with it. It's a genius idea. It's it's it's, it's, it's here it to stay. They just need to fine tune it a little bit better. I'm no kidding. I saw if you watch, we're watching the game a couple a couple weeks ago. A player literally teleported into the ice. It's I like, know it's it's it's, it's, so it's, it's year one, guys. It's year zero actually. Like <laughs> they they've never tried it. They literally just put it because it's it was their first 
trial of doing it, it's going to get progressively better. And it's the, it's a genius idea. It's, it's unbelievable. The marketing. No, I think, I think you're right. I mean, ultimately I like to poke fun at it. It, I mean, I have seen some glitches, but if they end up sorting out the glitches, it's not the end of the world. I would like that they would make the ads static and nothing moving. I think that's really dumb that all of a sudden I'm watching a play and a car drives by. I think that's really (laughs) stupid. So I hope they get rid of that. that. And it's static, but, but I I don't, I certainly don't mind it if they work it out. I mean, like like people are just pissed with their pants. Saw the car for a moment. (laughs) The best are the people I mean, who don't understand that they're not like in house. So they're like, "How come the players aren't distracted by the boards?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that I always so, find funny. It's like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, there. There's a lot. I mean, the NHL is doing stuff, right? I mean, they also did that real quick to talk about things that Bettman said. He also said that apparently from polling people, they don't seem to mind the ads on the jerseys. I mean, you know what? Yeah, I didn't like them. Do I like them today? No, I do not. But are they bothering me as much as I thought they would? No, mm-hmm. no. They're right. You kind of get over it. Now, granted, this isn't like the European leagues where it's like a billboard all over you with things everywhere. I think that would really piss me off. But the one patch logo that they have, yeah, you look past it, you don't really think about it. Would I prefer it's not there? Of course I prefer it's not there. But it isn't bothering me. I have to be a big enough fan to admit it's not bothering me as much as I initially thought it was going to. Um, I think I think in certain yeah. cases it looks good too. I mean, I I think the more money you can get, anyways, the better it is for the sport. So I'm all for it. But yeah. like you said, no plastering of the jerseys. No, like in soccer where you have like it's it's not even the logo. It's just the the, the sponsor, yeah. right? Like Chelsea was Samsung for the longest time. Like forget that. I don't want that. But uh, keep it as is. I think it's fine. I think it's it's a it's it was a logical next step. It makes sense. It makes sense. Vito, do you have any final comments you want to make? I'm good, man. I think I said everything I had to say. <laughs> he's, he's just, he's just there. He's, he's like, why are they not? Why is the trophy not named to Wayne Gretzky yet? I don't understand. He's the best player ever. Why? ever. Why, why is it not happening? It should be named after him, and they should, they should just split with Norris. That's it. I'm good with everything else. Leave it as, leave it as is, because you're gonna mess it all up. It's all fine. right. Well. Vito, thank you for those final those final inspiring words. Um, for everybody else, again, thanks very much for tuning in and listening and catching us wherever you're consuming this. Um, the, uh, fi- like We do have, I think, two tangible things I'd like to ask you guys, the community, if you want to respond to it, if you have your take on it, I'd be very curious. Question number one, would you trade Slavkovsky for Lafreniere straight up? I'm curious if you would. I don't think any of us here would, but would you and why? And the second one is, what do you guys think about if they rename the the awards? Would it would it piss you off? Would you be okay with it? Um, do you have any suggestions for some of the names of the awards that you think people would be you know get behind? Uh, we'd be super curious to read those in the comments too. Um, so on that, thank you again so much. Please check us out on social media. Hit up our Twitter. You can find our link tree there. That's that would be great. Shoot us some likes if you can. We would appreciate that too. Otherwise, for Dave and Vito, I'm Matt, and this was. Get pot.